Hello everyone, on this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your new Trezor. The first step what we do is we get out our uh, Trezor and we plug it into our USB port. So with the cord we received, we plug it into a USB port on our computer. And then the Trezor will show up on the screen and it'll actually tell us, it'll say welcome and go to trezor.io slash start. Hence what I've done here. So I've gone here to trezor.io slash start. So the next step, what we can do is we can uh, get the actual desktop app for Trezor Suite, which is the actual uh, Trezor application that you can use to view your coins, or you can just go to Trezor Suite for web. And for this video, we're going to just do the Trezor Suite for web version. So we click on Trezor Suite for web. We can see here as the page is opening, and it'll say here, and quite often it'll say connect your Trezor. Just wait a few seconds and then it'll pop up and it'll allow you to access it, all right? So as long as your USB um, is plugged in, it, you'll have access to it. Now, there'll be some chips there if you can't see it. So for example, I'm just gonna unplug my Trezor here and we can see now it says connect your Trezor. And let's say you have plugged in your Trezor and you've plugged it into the back, you've plugged it into the USB port and for some reason you still can't see your Trezor. There's a bunch of options you can choose here, okay? So we can do the Trezor Bridge status page. So we can ensure that the Trezor Bridge process is running. Try a different cable, try a different USB port, try using a different computer if you can. So there's a few things here and, it's, and then it's got still not working. You can actually go and contact support as well. So don't feel like, okay, it's not connecting, it's not working, I don't know what's happening. There's still plenty of options here to work it out. The troubleshooting guide with Trezor is quite good. So I'm going to go back now and plug my Trezor back into the USB port. And then in a few seconds now, after the Trezor lights up again, it will um, then pop up and it'll say uh, that uh, the Trezor uh, is connected. This next page is a page where it says, uh, do you mind if the data collected, so the anonymous data collection, right? All data collected is anonymous and is used to improve product performance and development. Now, this is totally your choice what you choose to do. You can click the little drop down here and it says what data do we collect it tells you what uh what they collect now me myself personally i'm not a big fan of this with any company it's not that i don't trust trezor or anything like that i just never allow anonymous data collection so i always turn this off but once again this is a personal choice so once you've made that choice there you then press confirm and then we go into the actual setup and security side of the trezor so we can see here security check so there's a few points here we want to make sure, okay? My hologram was intact and untampered with. I bought from the official TROP or, or a trusted reseller. And we also mentioned the package wasn't tampered with. So we need to make sure the package hasn't been opened. It hasn't been tampered with at all. But if you tick all those three boxes, which we should have, then you click on set up Trezor. The first thing we want to do now is firmware installation. So your Trezor is shipped without firmware, as it says, your device is ready to receive the latest full featured firmware in order to be used safely. If you uh, if you use only Bitcoin, we recommend installing Bitcoin only firmware. But what we're going to do, um, we're going to be setting up as in we're going to be using all different types of coins. So we won't be doing Bitcoin only firmware. So the newest version, it says what it is here, version 2.6.0 at the time of recording this video and we simply just click on install firmware. Okay, so we can see now that the firmware has been installed. It only took around about 60 to 90 seconds. So it shouldn't take really much more than maybe 120 seconds, two minutes at the most to install everything. But if it does take a little bit longer, don't stress too much, just let it do its thing. You'll see the little screen on Trezor, as long as it's still spinning around and working, then it's fine. So now we've got the software, uh, sorry, the firmware installed, and that's all done. We can see here the current version, new version, it's all done, completed with a tick. We simply click on continue. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is, of course, we're setting up a brand new wallet. We're going to be clicking on create new wallet, okay, as opposed to recovering wallet, uh, we're going to create on create new wallet. So we click on that. Now, the next thing we want to do here is we're just going to be doing a standard seed backup. So choose how to back up your Trezor. This process will also create a standard wallet for you. So we click on standard seed backup. Now it says here, wallet backup, choose how to back up your Trezor. 
this process will also create a standard wallet for you. Now, on your actual Trezor, you will see on the actual screen of the Model T, it'll say the words wallet creation. By continuing, you agree to Trezor's company's terms and conditions. More info at trezor.io slash TOS. But then you can simply just click on the big green button on your Trezor screen, create wallet. So click on create wallet. And then a processing sign will come up and it'll just take a second to process. And now we're at this next screen. So now we are on number two. Number two is your wallet is almost ready. You've successfully set up your Trezor and created your wallet. You should never use your Trezor without backing it up. It is the only way to recover a lost wallet. So never click on skip backup. We always want to create backup from the beginning. Okay, that's what we want to do because we're going to get our seed phrase and that is going to be what we're going to use um, if we ever lose our Trezor. Okay, so we click on create backup. Now, the next thing we need to do here is just tick some boxes. It says a seed backup is a series of randomly generated words created by your Trezor. It's important that you write down this seed backup as it is the only way to recover and access your funds. So we just got to simply click these boxes. So we first click this box, your seed backup lets you recover your funds in case of treasure loss or damage. Never take a picture or make a digital copy of your backup. And the third one, store your seed backup securely and never share it with anyone. So then we click begin backup. All right. So now it says here, create backup. A seed backup series is a randomly gen uh, generated words created by Trezor. As we said before, it's important that you write down this seed backup as it is the only way to recover and access your funds. So as I mentioned uh, on the previous video, when we unboxed and we uh, um, took everything out of its package, we received uh, a couple of bits of paper. One of those uh, pieces of paper is the actual personal recovery seed bit of paper, okay? And that is where we can write down these words, all right? So on my little treasure screen now, it says never make a digital copy of your seed and never upload it online. This is super, super crucial, guys. We don't ever want to make a digital copy of our seed phrase because if anyone ever gets access to our computer and they find with the digital copy of the seed phrase, quite simply, all the coins, every all your assets that you have on that, Trezor are not safe and they can be transferred over. If anyone has your C phrase, they have access to all of your coins and assets on that Trezor. You need to make that super, super clear. So these words that we write down, it's super vital that you make sure that these are kept in a very, very safe and secure place. Now on our Trezor, we've got a big blue sign there that says, okay, I understand. So I've just pressed that sign that says, okay, I understand. And now it's giving me um, all my words that I need to go through. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause the recording one more time as I write down my words. Okay, so I've written down these 12 words on my piece of paper, and then I've held down the button to confirm that I've wrote them down. Now, the next thing it's saying is it says uh, things like it says select word four of 12, right? So on your one, it may say select word seven of 12. It may say select word three of 12. There's no specific order that this comes in. But as these words come in and it says select word four of 12, you've got to actually click on what that word is. It doesn't matter uh, what order it is in as long as you select the word corresponding with that number. Okay, so that's done. Now we click on the continue button. And then the next uh, screen it'll say, it says use your backup when you need to recover your wallet your backup is done and we click continue once more. And now the next step here is to set up a pin. Okay, so we can see on the uh, uh, the screen here, it says wallet backup complete. If you've written down your recovery seed, which we have, and you should have as well, your treasure is almost ready. Do not lose your recovery seed. Once again, we need to emphasize this. If anyone has access to that, those 12 words, they have access to all of your coins. So you need to keep it in a very, very safe place. Otherwise, your funds could be inaccessible as well, right? So if you lose it as well and you lose your treasure, then those words and your treasure, if you've lost them both, that is not a good combination because that means that, uh, yeah, you're, you're not going to have access to your crypto. But the next step here is to continue to pin. So we click on continue to pin. And then it says here, use a strong pin, protects your treasure from unauthorized physical access, right? So we click on set pin. 
And then on your actual Trezor, it's going to come up and it's going to say pin settings. Do you want to enable pin protection? And we click enable. And then the next step it comes up with is all of the numbers on the screen. Now it's got from the number zero through to the number nine, and they're all mixed up on the screen. Now it's up to you how many numbers you do. I think the minimum you have to do is four. I think the maximum is like 30 or something. It's quite a lot. I personally have my pin set at six numbers. I find that six is a is a good way that I don't ever have to write it down. It stays in my head. Uh, and uh, it's it's not too many numbers to remember, but six is still a very, very secure pin number to have. But whatever it is, just make sure you remember it, okay? And my suggestion would be, and there's an actual um, place on that piece of paper to write it down, write down your device pin on that piece of paper as well. So I'm just going to punch in the six numbers that I want to do here now. Okay, so now we've punched your the pin number in twice, okay? It'll say on your screen, it'll say you have successfully enabled pin protection, all right? So once you've punched that in twice, you will then have that. Uh, we've gone to the next screen now, which is you've successfully enabled pin protection. That's what it says on our Trezor screen. So I now click continue. And once I click continue, we can see that our computer screen has updated and it says, write your pin down and keep it safe. Now I have wrote this down on the um, the same piece of paper that I wrote the 12 word C phrase down. So as it says here, use it to unlock your Trezor when you need to access your funds. So the next step now is to press continue. Now, step number four, coins. We need to activate the different coins that you're going to be using for your Trezor. So as it says here, select cryptocurrencies to show in Trezor Suite. You can change this setting at any time. Some coins are ERC20 tokens and can be used by enabling Ethereum below. So what we're going to enable today is we've already got Bitcoin ticked and I'm also going to click Ethereum as well. Now, you guys can click anything you like, right? If you have some Dash, click on Dash. If you have Dogecoin, click on Dogecoin. If you have Zcash, click on Zcash. Whatever it is, click on the tokens that you actually have that you want to save in there. I'm just going to tick it, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So once that's done, we then click on complete setup. Now, this is the final step. This is the step where you can actually call it uh, any kind of fancy name that you like or, or anything like that. You can change the home screen as well. So on here, we can click on edit name. So on this, I'm just going to call it my Trezor. And that is done. So click edit name. That's done. And it says on your screen then, whatever you want to change it to, it says device name on my Trezor screen. It says, do you want to change device name to my Trezor? I click the green tick and then it changes that. And then if we want to change the home screen, I can click on home screen and there's different options I can choose here. All right, so you can choose whatever you like. So I'm just going to choose this little green lock. So I'm going to press on green lock. And then on my Trezor, on the screen on my Trezor, it says once again, set home screen. I press confirm and then that is done. And then quite simply after that, you're ready to go. You're ready to get coins on your Trezor, set up complete. We click access suite and that then takes us to the actual suite. Select wallet type and we want to select standard wallet. Once we press on standard wallet, It'll then load up your Trezor. Now, because this is a brand new Trezor, it's loading here for the first time and it's going to load with zero dollars because there's obviously no, uh, no coins, there's nothing in it. The asset section has Bitcoin and Ethereum because they're the two coins that I chose. And we can see down here that security is set up, backup created, pin enabled, pass rate enabled. The final one is discrete mode where you can temporarily hide your balances. You can try discrete mode and check that out if you like. I feel like I don't need to have that, so that's okay. I'm happy for that to be like that. And you can hide them at any time, right? You can hide that or you can show it. It really doesn't matter. So that is it, guys. Your Trezor is all now set up and is all ready to use. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.